Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Today we have a special guest with us today, Steve George from the Plant Pathology Department. Steve, what sort of diseases should we be looking out for this time of year? Well, Jim, the, uh, the major problems that, that we want to be uh, talking about are the fruit uh, diseases. And, and fruit, they're, they're fun to grow, they're delicious to eat, but very frankly, they're a lot of work because they are subject to many, many different uh, types of disease problems. But with, with good instruction and background information, the home uh, gardener can grow excellent fruit. Okay. What diseases in particular do we need to look for this well, time of year? And very, very soon the, the uh, blooming period will be upon us and, and with apples there are three uh, diseases you need to be uh, aware of. The uh, first is called apple scab and most all of these uh, diseases we'll discuss will be caused by different types of uh, fungi and this is a, a uh, fungal disease that attacks the, the leaves as they're expanding, causes olive brown lesions on the leaves but it can also cause dark brown corky lesions or uh, diseased areas on the, on the fruit as it uh, matures. Uh, the, the homeowner wants to be spraying a uh, labeled uh, fungicide at the green tip stage and also the pre-pink stage to help control apple scab. And also at this pre-pink stage there is a second uh, fungal disease that's very very common here in Oklahoma. It's a very interesting uh, uh, problem from a uh, scientific standpoint. It's called cedar apple rust. And if you've ever noticed in the spring when, the, uh, when our uh, cedar trees get these large orange galls on them, what's actually happening, that is a fungal tissue, and the little brown gall remains there all uh, winter. And in the spring, these orange gelatinous spore horns are extruded, and those spore horns are then covered with, with thousands of uh, teliospores. Well, they germinate to each, each one of them will produce four little basidia spores that float in the air currents and when they land on uh, an apple leaf or a apple fruit where the, there's a film of moisture there, they can infect and cause very serious problems on the apple. So you'd certainly want to uh, spray for those. And so the, in, re, in return, the spores that are formed on the apple infect the cedars? Right. That happens uh, in the uh, middle of the uh, summer and normally we we see very little if any damage to the uh, cedars but if you don't protect your susceptible apples and crab apples you can get a tremendous amount of, of, of damage on them. Now again when's the time to spray for the cedar apple rust? Okay that would be at uh, pre-pink just uh, uh, before a full bloom and then during full bloom we have a bacterial disease called fire blight and uh, the, it's very aptly named because it looks like the ends of the uh, branches have been in scorch, but this is oftentimes spread uh, during the, uh, the blooming period. So what's uh, commonly used is an antibiotic called uh, streptomycin. There are various uh, formulations of that and normally they're applied like every uh, three or four days during the uh, blooming period. But as with any pesticide, you would certainly want to read and uh, follow label directions. Okay. Okay. Now the apple scab and cedar apple rust are just apple diseases, but the fire blight will also infect pears. That's right. true. And uh, many other members of the rosa family, quince, pyracantha, many other ornamentals. Okay. Are there any other fruit diseases? Yes, that pretty well covers the apples, but on the stone fruits, the, the, the uh, peaches and the uh, nectarines and all, there is a, a fungal disease called brown rot. And this uh, commonly attacks the mature fruit. But, and many people don't realize this, it can also attack the uh, blossoms and cause a blighting or a death of the, of the uh, blossoms. So you, the, the, the homeowner needs to be spraying at uh, pre-bloom and early bloom with a label fungicides to uh, control this blossom blight phase of, of brown rot. And you'll need sprays later, but this blossom spray is probably important to cut down on inoculum right, and, absolutely. and reduce problems later on. Right. Okay. Now, for ornamentals, are there any diseases uh, ah, that you yes. need to look for? Two, two of my favorite diseases on <laughs> ornamentals. One, uh, we don't have many problems here that will, that will really damage pines, but one that will is a fungus disease called tip blight. It, it kills the, the uh, new tissue out at the uh, ends or at tips of the, of the branches. It uh, causes the needles to, to uh, uh, turn brown. So uh, to protect your trees against this, if, if, if they're already infected, of course, prune out that infected material and dispose of it. And then two applications of a fungicide about a week apart starting in uh, late March will help to protect 
that uh, the, the new shoot or a candle, a tissue, you want to protect that with a, a fungicide until the needles have erupted or uh, come through the uh, needle sheets. Is that all pines that are susceptible? Uh, well, we see major problems with it here on Austrian pine, which is uh, very commonly planted in Oklahoma. So it's really only a serious problem on the Austrian? I think so. Uh -huh. okay. I think so. Now, a second uh, a disease that happens very, very commonly here on sycamores is called anthracnose. Mm -hmm. It can cause extensive defoliation and twig uh, dieback on these, these trees. There, there are four different phases of anthracnose. It can, it can kill the ends of uh, one-year-old twigs before the leaves even emerge. It can also kill the buds as they open. And uh, commonly, our, our uh, county extension agents get, get calls from homeowners and, and they say, oh my goodness, my, my sycamore is just not leafing out this year, or, or it's slow or spotty and not leafing out. What's happening, the tree is doing its best to leaf out, but as soon as those buds start to open, the fungus kills it at, at that point. As the uh, season progresses just a little bit further and you have new expanding shoots and leaves, they can be killed very, very quickly by this fungus and that can be mistaken for a frost injury. And then uh, later on, uh, as, as the leaves uh, become fully formed, there can be brown necrotic areas along the veins and midribs of, of, of the leaves. But the thing to keep in mind is that this disease from the time the leaves start to emerge, that two-week period in there, if it is cool and rainy, the fungus loves that. So, so that would be a very dangerous time if you have uh, a uh, susceptible uh, sycamore. If it's cool and rainy and you've had the uh, disease before, I would uh, certainly take, take steps to uh, protect your tree. So that's your real critical period right. for control is just at bud rate. Right. Just at bud rate. Uh, what, what a person wants to do is, is prune out and remove the infected tissue, and, and then as the, uh, you always want to water and fertilize your uh, tree well during the growing season to uh, keep it vigorous. But if fungicides are, are required, you would want to apply those at, at bud break and about 14 days later. And if, if we have continued periods of cool, rainy conditions, perhaps even a third application about uh, two weeks after the second would be, would be needed. But there's an even easier way to handle this. If, you, if you're uh, thinking about uh, planting a, a sycamore, there is a hybrid called a London plane tree, which looks very, very similar to our native uh, sycamore here that is much, much more resistant to this anthracnose problem. And I wanted to mention that, that anthracnose is quite a common. And on an otherwise healthy tree, to just have it be infected one year, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you have several years in succession where you've had significant amounts of infection, I would uh, certainly take steps to control it. Well, thank you, Steve, for joining us.